Thank you for joining in today's session on Azure Policy and uh, we are going to cover what exactly Azure Policy and when to use and also when to consider the Azure Policies. These are the things we are going to look into this lecture. So first thing first, let's understand what exactly Azure Policy if you're quite new. Azure Policy is a service offered by Microsoft Azure and that will help you or it will enable you to create and assign and manage some kind of you know, policies that has some kind of you know, control on your resources or you can do the audit of your resources. So these policies will enforce, it's going to enforce on a different rule based uh, over your resources and the configuration so that those configurations stay compliant with your corporate standards. That's where the Azure policy will be used. So things you need to you know, uh, consider uh, for example, uh, here in the production and production uh, has the application one and application two and you could you know apply here virtual machines limited to certain SKUs so that you can enforce on a production level on your app and app one or app two virtual machines will follow that specific SKUs and they cannot um, they cannot host or they cannot spin up any additional uh, SQs other than what you have defined in your Azure policy. That's a, a classic example for you to you know better understand how we can enforce, right? And also, if you look at the deploying only a certain locations on a different uh, on a different for each application, so you could you know achieve this. So you have application one and application two. One is maybe just to the UK region. Other one would be maybe just for the Australia region. So you could actually achieve this with the help of Azure policy. So this will help you in terms of enforcing those policies and it also uh, gives you auditing and logging for your SQL applications also. So a large number of built-in policies are available and you could even create those uh, custom policies. For example, you can uh, create a certain virtual machine sizes that we just uh, talked about for a project based on some kind of you know, costing and you can ensure all resources are correctly tagged. So, so earlier we in the past lecture we also learned about the Azure tagging if not you can just go through that lecture. Tagging is very important in order to you know uh, understand the criticality or maybe SLAs or business case or function business functional uh, case or maybe IT alignment. So tags can be assigned or can be enforced directly with the help of Azure policy. And also you could recommend system updates on your servers with the help of Azure policy. And you can also enable multi-factor authentication for all of your subscription accounts. So these are the, some classic examples that I'm taking uh, in this theory uh, lecture within the Azure policies. The couple of things that you need to consider when you are, are trying to create Azure policies, uh, since the Azure policy lets you define both individual policies, also a group of related policies can be deployed. These this is called initiatives, and Azure policy comes with uh, many built-in policies and also some of the initiative definitions too. And Microsoft Azure policies lets you scope and enforce. Uh, policies at different levels uh, within your organization hierarchy. That's Azure policies can be inherited down the hierarchy and also Azure policies evaluates your resources at the highest resources that aren't com a compliant with the policies you have created. Azure policies can prevent non-compliant resources from being created so that uh, the users cannot create any kind of resources until they actually uh, be in compliant. So that's where you can measure your organization standards. And also, as your policy can automatically remediate non compliant resources. This is very interesting and very important. Uh, these are the things you should actually know before creating Azure policies. Azure policies will evaluate all resources in Azure and Azure Arc uh, enable resources, specific resource type of hosted outside of Azure also. And uh, Azure policy integrates with Azure DevOps by applying pre-deployment and post-deployment policies just to apply from the previous slide for our tailwind traders uh, 
as a company uh, we can consider applying as your policy at their application level also some of the policies will be applied at the IT management group level uh, like a production in this case and the other pro other policies will be assigned at the application level we just talked about it and also during this uh, entire process we should be considering using the Azure policy uh, complaints dashboard and also we can evaluate uh, the resources uh, with uh, policy initiatives and also you should be considering what you will be do if a resource is non-compliant let's say this application is not going to complain then what kind of actions you're going to do for example deny a change to your resource or log changes to your resource or alter your resource before or after a change or deploy related complaint uh, resources so these things you should be considering along with considering when you when you go for automatically remediate or non-compliant resources in some cases as your policies can automatically remediate non-compliant resources we just talked about in the previous slide so a remediation uh, is especially useful for uh, resource tagging uh, that's where we will be you know, combinationally we will be using with Azure policy and the tagging that's what we learned in the previous lecture also as your policy can tag resources and reapply tags that have been removed for example uh, Azure policy can ensure all resources in a certain resource group should be tagged with a location tag example that could be a best example consider when um, how basically as your policy is different from a role based access it's very important to understand in the next lecture we're going to talk about the or back but you need to understand how it is different from as your policy with a role based access uh, access control so it's very important uh, not to confuse as your policy and as your or back as your are back and as your policy should be used together to achieve full scope control not just a single thing you try to use both the things so that you have a full control on a scoping the controls so as your policy a uh, policy to ensure that the resources state in a complaint in your organization's business roles so compliance doesn't depend on who made the change or who has who has a permissions to make the changes it never look at the Azure policy in these lines I'll repeat Azure policy never look at who made the changes and whether they have a permission or not instead it will uh, evaluate the state of the resource to act to ensure that resources stay a complaint based on the policies that you defined uh, we, we talked a lot of you know examples like SQS or regional location or tax uh, to be applied automatically but whereas other hand for Azure or back which is going to focus on users actions let's see uh, the uh, the action could be how it is a different uh, or who's going to manage uh, the access controls on those resources and what they can do with those resources and what areas they ha they can have the access uh, if actions needs to be controlled then use the RBAC if an individual has access to complete an action but the result is non-compliant resource then you should be looking into the Azure policy uh, not on a or back uh, that's a major difference I would say at this point of time but you know you should you know look into the or back lecture which I'm going to talk uh, with respect to the how to design and considerations uh, in the next lecture thank you for watching this we'll catch you in the next lecture